OK, well, the forehand was obviously a huge part of your game, Boris. So we're going to take a look at some footage of you on court in action. But just first of all, while we're looking at the action, just talk about who taught you to play tennis, what age did you start, and who taught you the forehand? I was playing my first tennis uh, game when I was three years old. And the reason was that my parents, especially my father, was a keen tennis player. Okay. And our local tennis club was around the corner. So the whole family played tennis. Instead of me staying at home at three years old, they took me to the club. And my first teacher was my sister. She's four years older. She was the club champion early on. And she's responsible for all the mistakes I made in tennis. <laughs> so she was only seven then? She was seven, but she was the first one that taught me how to grip the forehand and the backhand and the serve. So she gave you the grips that you've got today? Exactly. Absolutely. Well, there's uh, some wonderful shots of you on... Uh, was that court one, the old court that one That was the old court one where... Uh, they, they tore it down, I believe. They don't have it anymore. No, it's not there anymore. Yeah. But in terms of uh, other sports, were you only doing tennis at that age or did you do other sports as well? No, I did a lot of other sports. I think that's important for kids and youngsters especially. Oh. Otherwise, you get physically trained one-sided. I did a lot of football, a lot of basketball, skiing and swimming. So my whole body was trained in a quite good way. Okay, and your, inspi oh, your parents were pretty athletic as well? Yeah, yeah. My father was a, a German a champion in swimming. Uh, and my sister is a great skier and a good tennis player. And my mother made sure that the house was running. So You're from good stock. <laughs> I'm from a pretty good stock. Yeah, yeah. you are. Yeah. Okay, well, I think we're going to get you to do some uh, forehands. So Matt's going to feed you some balls. So yeah. why don't you talk us through the technique on the forehand in terms of the swing, the positioning of your feet, the contact point. Just give us some uh, ideas on the forehand. But before I hit one, now you have, when you see the top 100 players of the, court of the world, there are 100 different forehands. Some swing high, some swing low, some have an open grip, some have a closed grip. But everyone hits the ball early. So I personally, as a coach, don't care what you do behind there. I care when you hit the ball and whether you follow it through. So I'll give you an example. My, my backswing is pretty low, but I hit it early. So you want to set up with your legs and go through the ball and hit it early. Now, if I want to hit more topspin, I hit a bit higher. But again, I hit the ball early. You know, it doesn't mean that I have to hit it behind if I go more topspin. If I do a forehand slice that's not played anymore, I just go like this. But again, you see the ball is hit early in front of your body. Ideally, if you have time, with the left leg is in front. If you have time, sometimes in today's game, guys hit like this, where they, they save a leg and they save time. But again, it's hit early and not behind you. So what about a more a loopier shot that's a more defensive shot, say on a clay court yeah. or something? Where would, you, where would your contact point be and how would you load up on the legs for a, for a more defensive shot? Yeah, there the position of the, of the legs is very similar. Why don't you hit me a ball? There you go again with your leg. You don't hit behind you, but you hit higher through, through the ball. So again, you're actually going off the back foot? I'm going off the back foot because I want to slow down the play in itself, so I go on the back foot, I have a bit more time and space, and again, follow through with the racket. In Spain, they teach to the contact point between the shoulder and the hips, so where would you recommend? Well, it depends how early you get to the ball. The yeah. higher you be able to hit it, the more power you can accelerate. If you're caught late, you have to hit it low, but then you have to, have to hit the ball up. So the key is, again, is your footwork to get there early, get a, get a good setup, and then ideally hit the ball right, right before it's coming down. So you hit from up, you hit from up to down. And let's just get, just get some ideas, because yours is quite a looped forehand yeah, take yeah. back, isn't it? But every, as you say, everybody hits the ball differently. So everybody where did, you has get, a, where did you get your loop from? Uh, from from your sister. my sister, but <laughs> no, I had a great coach when I was 10, 12 years old, and he was from, from Croatia. His name was also Boris, actually. And he taught the forehand not only to me, but also to Steffi Graf. So he ah, must have been doing something ah, right. There we go. Again, his, his focus was acceleration through the follow-up, through the follow-through. He didn't care so much how you, where, where, where the racket was, whether it was up or low, but once you follow through that you hit it here. So and to then meet the ball out in front. Meet the ball out in front and then accelerate with your wrist. I yes. think the best uh, forehands today are the ones that use their wrist the most. On clay, for example, it's Nadal. With this grip, he has to use the wrist more than anybody because he's just so under the ball.